Good morning, everyone. Today is uh, Wednesday, March the 3rd, and it is 9.18 in the morning. Let's start with a sound saying. Coming from Proverbs 10, 24. It says, the desire of the righteous shall be granted. The desire of the righteous shall be granted. Psalm 13, 5 says, but I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. I have trusted in thy mercy. My heart shall rejoice in thy salvation. Okay, um, I'm going to give you some more words out of my notes, as always. And then we're going to read, uh, we're going to begin Psalms 107. It's kind of a long one, so we will not complete the entire psalm today. We'll do it in a two-day span. Uh... In the meantime, we can start with uh, Monday, January 11, 2021 notes. Uh, I have some words here for you. I might have given these words to you before, but it's, it's always okay to give them to you twice. The first one is division. Division. Disagreement between two or more groups typically produces tension or hostility division. Now, this here can cause uh, strife, mayhem even, and in between two folks, between family members, between friends, between companies. Uh, it doesn't matter who the parties are. The outcome is always the same, division. It is not a good thing. Um, let me rephrase that. There are times when division is a good thing, but never when it causes trouble and strife. Okay? It is time when division is good, but never when it causes trouble, strife, conflict of any kind. Okay, Jude one nineteen says these are sensual persons who cause division, not having the spirit of God within them. Sensual people are people who are uh, inclined to do whatever it is that they please it, regardless of whether it is morally sound or not. All right. Uh, again, these are the ones who are uh, agitators, causing division, worldly-minded. As, as we say, they do not have the spirit of God within them, so they handle things in a much different fashion. And it is never uh, uh, peaceful in nature at all. These are the ones who are agitators, causing division, worldly-minded, secular, unspiritual, carnal, merely sensual, unsaved, devout of the spirit. These are their characteristic traits. Okay. Jude 1, 9 say, says, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he reputed about the body of Moses, um, does not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, the Lord rebuffed thee. These are the words that Michael the archangel said to the devil uh, regarding the uh, issue of the body of Moses. They were uh, in conflict there, and rather than insult the devil, he simply said to him, God will rebuck you. And that is an appropriate response even today 
to give to someone who is giving you a hard time. Okay, God will rebuke you and he will. Jude one ten says, But these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts in those things they corrupt themselves. Yes, sir. So when they behave like beasts, they they are actually corrupting themselves. Alright? Uh, that does not mean that you need to stoop to their level. You need to maintain your Christ-like behavior, even in the midst of that or those that are ignorant. You can deal with them in a Christ-like manner. All right. Uh, Titus 3, 9, 11. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. It is unprofitable in vain to be arguing about anything um, that, that will result in causing strife. Uh, you definitely is unprofitable to be arguing over the laws of God because it is it's useless. Okay, you speak it, uh, you read it, you speak it, you define it, and if they refuse to receive it, then let it go. It is not worth arguing over, all right? As the archangel and the devil did not argue over Moses, they just called it a day. And the archangel said, the Lord will rebuke you, and that is the proper way of leaving things. Okay. Uh, unprofitable. What does that mean? Not profitable. Producing no gain, good or results. Uh, barren, empty, fruitless, fruitile, ineffective, unsuccessful, vain, useless. This is what unprofitable means. And if, if it is all these things, then it's not worth your effort to argue over it, okay? Um, I'm going to give you one more. Deadly, uh, yes, things that are unprofitable can sometimes go into the realm of being deadly, potent, disturbing. It causes riots, uh, unrest, war, civil war, sorrows, uh, and destruction. This is what happened on January uh, the 6th. Uh, uh, that which was being done was totally unprofitable and it caused the death of two very innocent individuals and and it was not worth it at all, at all. Um, central, relating to or involving gratification of the senses of physical, especially sexual pleasures. This is the name of the game today. Everybody's just so into uh, pleasures, uh, uh, even if they are uh, unspeakable pleasures. Uh, uh, they seem to be embarking on that uh, trend, uh, I would call it, on, 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 on unabominable behavior and practices is what's being done today. Um, Slander, the quality of being loose, uh, negligent, uh, um, neglectful, the trait of negligence, responsibility, and lacking concern. This is, this is the attitude that people have today. Uh, they feel that it is proper and okay to slander one another. It is never okay. Never. Uh, it is something that should not be done, period. Uh, whether it's between friends, family, uh, social issues, uh, or whether it's, it's, it's between elected officials running for government, slander should never be uh, among the things that they use to make a point because what? It is unprofitable. Okay? Um, and we're going to stop at slander. Um, oh, oh, 
Okay, we have one more. Sacred. Uh, some things are sacred in life. Uh, this is a word that the world doesn't like because it's when you say sacred, it relates to God, the God of Israel, the Almighty God of, of this earth. Okay, some things are biblically sacred. Biblical ordinances are sacred. The commandments are sacred. Baptism is sacred. Um, sacred biblical ordinances. Uh, uh, baptism, communion. The commandments are greater than any man written law or constitution. These things are sacred. The Constitution of America is not sacred. All right? Uh, the Constitution or government are not sacred. Okay? And we're going to stop it there. Let me highlight this. And let's begin with some. Um, In this particular psalm, there are, I believe, 43 verses. Yes, 43 verses. There are no uppercase lettering here. There is, uh, we have pink for witnessing, black for sin, blue for salvation. We do have some split verses. Verse 6 is split. Verse 13 is split. Um, verse 19 is split. But we will only read up to verse 21, okay? And uh, it talks about the redeems are exhorted to praise God for satisfying their soul. Yes, we ought to praise God in the morning, praise God throughout our day, praise God just because all is well in our lives. Don't just uh, wait until there's trouble in your life to call upon God. Okay? Call upon Him even when there is no trouble. When all is well, thank Him for it. Praise Him for it. Uh, show Him gratitude for it. Okay? Learn to speak to God, it, not just in your troubles or in your sorrows, but in your rest, Lord God. Praise Him. Okay? So... We're going to read this from the both, uh, both Bibles. And I will try to incorporate both Bibles here. Let's begin. Verse 1 to 5 is uh, pink for witnessing. And it says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Okay. Yes, God is good. All right? He is good. And in the same way that he is good, he can also be terrible. He can turn into a terror. But because his mercy is so great, he tries not to go there with us. He really, really tries hard not to punish his people. He prays, he, he hopes that you will listen to those that he has here on earth. To remind you of his laws and his ways. So he tries to preserve punishment as a last result. Okay? So, oh, give God, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endures forever. Alright? Verse 2, let the redeemed of the Lord say so, whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Three. And gather them out of the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. For they wandereth in the wilderness in a solitary way. They find no city to dwell in. Five. Hunger and thirst their souls faint in them. Yes, when you're wandering in the desert, even today, hunger and thirst will overtake thee. Okay. And if you shall survive any amount of days. And these harsh terrains, you better believe it's not because of anything you have done. It is because the grace of God is upon thee. Solely. Okay, let's read it from him. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He, he, his love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say this. 
those he redeemed from the hand of the foul three, those he gathered from the lands, from the east and the west, from the north and the south four, some wander in deserts, wasteland, finding no way to a city where they could settle. Five, they are hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebb away. Okay, six uh, is that first split verse I was telling you about. Um, yellow, orange coming first for your faith, and then blue for salvation. The orange part says, since they cried unto the Lord in their trouble. That is the uh, orange part. Yes, we tend to, we know how to cry unto the Lord when we're in trouble, don't we? And he delivers them out of their distress. Does he not? Yes, he does. Even though you have not talked to him all year or the last 10 years, when you get in trouble, he what? He saves you just for you to give you the glory to the person the Lord sent to save you. Seven. And he leads them forth by the right way that they may go to a city of habitation. Let's take that from seven here. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. Seven, he led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Eight is rare for discipleship. All oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. Nine is green for love, for he... For he satisfieth the longing soul and filleth the hungry soul with goodness. Amen. Uh, 10, 11, and 12 is black for sin. Such as sit in the darkness and in the shadows of death, being bond in affliction and iron. 11, because they rebelled against the word of God and contemned the, the counsel of the Most High. 12, therefore he brought down their heart with labor, they fell down, and there was none to help them. Yes, you can make it where there's no one to rescue you. Yes, he can. Make it where no one can find you. All right, let's take it from um, 6 to 12 here. I'm sorry, 8 to 12. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. 9. For he satisfied the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. 10. Some sit in darkness and the deepest glooms, prisoners suffering in iron chains. 11. For they have rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. 12. So he subjected them to bitter labor. They stumbled and there was no one to help them. Uh, 13 is that next split verse. It, orange for your faith comes first. And it says, then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble again. And the blue part says that he saved them out of their distress. 14. Blue again for your salvation. He brought them out of darkness and the shadow of death and break their bonds in the sundra. Okay, 13, 14. Let's read it from here. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them from their distress. 14. He brought them out of darkness and the deepest gloom and broke away their chains. Amen. 15 and 16 is read for discipleship again. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Exclamation mark there. 16. For he has broken the gates of brass and cut the bars of iron in the sumbler. 17 and 18 is black for sin. Fools, because of their transgressions and because of their inequity, are afflicted. So what is it what is it that we need to be? We need to be wise, not foolish. We need to always think of how God thinks of what we're doing in our motives. We need to be more concerned about how God 
receives that we, we what which we do. We need to consider God in all things that we do. Okay? This way we we are protected. But if you listen only to the word of man, you place yourself in a terrible way to tr put your trust in men. Never do that. Never put your trust in men. Never. Put all your trust in God. Because if man does something to you, who will you run to? You will run to your heavenly father as we ran to our earthly fathers when things went wrong in the world. Okay? But our Heavenly Father is a lot more powerful than our earthly father that is limited. Alright? So fools, because of their transgressions and because of their inequities, are afflicted. Their souls are war, all manner of me, and they draw near unto the gates of death. That's, that's what foolishness gets you. That's why it's not worth being foolish. It is definitely to your benefit to think wisely in all that you do. 19 is that next split verse, orange coming first for your faith. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble and the blue part, and he saved them out of their distress. No matter how many times you cry, he will always come to thee. No matter how many times, he will always rescue thee. But do we always give him thanks? No, we do not. Okay, uh, 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Amen. The last verse for today, which is read for discipleship. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wondrous work to the children of men. Even today, he does some wondrous work. But do we give him the credit for it? Absolutely not. We give it to the men. In that incident, not too long ago, where a plane landed in the Hudson River, who do you, re who do you think received the glory for that? The pilot, who was just as terrified as his passengers. Okay. Only God can land a plane where even a baby remains in his seat. Only God can do that. Remember, man's abilities are limited. Always and forevermore. Anything that is done on this earth that is of magnitude, it is in God's divine power, not man's. Okay, so let's take it from here. 17 to 21. Some become fools through their rebellious ways and suffer affliction because of their inequities. 18. They load all food and draw near to the gates of death. 19. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. 21. He sent forth his word and healed them. He rescued them from the grave. 21. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for men. Yes, please. Please. Throughout your day, learn to ponder over the things of God. You don't have to, you could be at the traffic light, you could be shopping, you could be doing anything. It takes just a minute to give God praise in your heart. You don't have to lift your lips or move your lips. You can give him thanks in your heart. Why? Because he is a heart reader. He knows when you're just standing there praising him silently. So learn to do that more often. And your days will go better. Okay? Thank you for listening. I am sorry I did not read the entire 43 verses to you. However, we can continue this tomorrow if I live and nothing happens. In the meantime, may the peace of God be upon you. May the protection of God surround you. And may the will of God for your life and for this earth be manifested. Thank you and have a beautiful day. And as always, I love you, but God loves you more. Have a wonderful day.